vector quantization support vector machine there, but I could not cover uh, regression uh, and um, KNN classifiers. So in this uh, session, first I shall be quickly uh, covering from from regression, and then uh, shall be shall be covering the KNN K, K nearest neighbor classifier. Then we will go to one more one more presentation. That shall be uh, fuzzy based system design for uh, pattern recognition. So let's start with this regression part. So <laughs> regression uh, we can <clears throat> define to be a set of statistical uh, techniques, methods used for determination of relationship between a dependent variable and one or more independent variables. So we can use, uh, use uh, regression to, to determine the relationship the relationship between uh, between variables and uh, and modeling the future relationship between them. We can find that the, that the regression can be of three three main types. One will be linear regression, and then the second one can be non nonlinear regression. Uh, but between them, there there can be multiple linear uh, regression too. So, uh, so, a, so this slide shows the linear regression. Linear regression. Uh, uh, is done by the use of that uh, straight line uh, based uh, discrimination um, technique so this is quite quite beneficial for simplistic cases where we want to deal with binary classification so therefore a straight line is quite sufficient for such a such a purpose a linear regression uh, works uh, very well for simplistic uh, regression cases, uh, but uh, for simplistic regression, it fails for uh, for classification. But uh, if you want to do a um, serious classification, linear regression is not that much suitable. Therefore, we find a straight line is quite uh, quite sufficient for doing a um, regression. Uh, that means you can use the use the present know-how uh, or the present dependence between the um, between the variables to build a, a future relationship between the between the variables. So this is the this is the <coughs> process of regression. Therefore, for a for linear case, we can use a straight line to uh, to use the present knowledge of relationship between the the variables to predict the future relationship between the variables then uh, a more uh, more complex uh, form of regression is the logistic uh, regression and logistic regression is quite suitable for dealing with binary binary classes so you can uh, you can have a continuous set of values uh, coming for, for a price of a house or for the stock 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 market so you can use such such prices stock market prices or a house price uh, to build its uh, to uh, to predict the future price variation of the house or the stock stock price so similarly, you can uh, you can deal with a logistic regression type where you want to uh, uh, know or find out uh, uh, a patient has cancer or not, uh, predicting uh, uh, when the customer will uh, will will churn. So these these are the these are some of the some of the cases. That can be dealt with by uh, by logistic regression. Yes, no, yes, no cases, but those yes, no cases with uh, with continuous variation of the 
of the variables that can be dealt with by uh, logistic regression. Then linear regression uh, is estimated by the use of by the use of uh, the OLS the ordinary least square uh, 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 while the logistic regression is estimated by the use of maximum likelihood estimation method so these are some of the some of the basic uh, considerations linked with the logistic regression. Then we can do uh, a classification by the use of the logistic classification by this by this logistic regression. So for that we can use a a, a, uh, a neural computing technique, a neural computing model where we can have a multiple layer uh, network. On the first layer, second layer, third layer, and uh, the the layers can have logistic function. Here is a here is a logistic function zone. So by the by the use of the logistic function, we can we can generate uh, logistic regression. So how the how the logistic uh, function uh, can be used for a classification <laughs> representation. Yeah, we can find so in the in the left side we find a a training time case so where we want to uh, do a binary classification or where the where the network has learned the binary classification regarding the the nature of the tumor if that is a benign one or if that is a is a malignant one so the so the network has learned during the, the during the training time the the, uh, the nature of the tumor so once that that is known or once that uh, training phase is done we can use that particular uh, that particular learning or that particular knowledge to do a classification uh, for the for the subsequent cases uh, that can be based on the on the regression so if now a fresh set of uh, cancer slides come or cancer data come so those fresh um, set of cancer data can be now subjected to a classification with the with the help of a logistic regression uh, uh, training so that a a reliable discrimination is generated. So this uh, this right side slide shows that. So here is a here is a depiction of how the linear regression and the and the logistic regression uh, turns out to be. So we find for the for the linear regression case, a straight line is sufficient for generating the regression. While in the case, so therefore we can use there. A linear discriminant function for doing the for generating the regression, but for the for the logistic regression case, we will use a uh, a log log sigmoid function to generate that sigmoidal uh, sigmoidal plot, and then that that particular sigmoidal plot is quite sufficient for dealing with a, a continuous set of um, a set of values that are used finally for generating binary binary classification so we can here find that uh, here is a case of uh, we are feeding to a network a set of continuous uh, data a linear um, a linear regression regression network and that that particular that particular case or that that particular network taking the continuous set of values during the during the training time uh, generating the, the response finally then uh, we can see one more case where uh, there is a mm, uh, there is a multi class uh, logistic uh, logistic regression uh, so there we can use a continuous setup uh, setup values and then feed them uh, with 
feed them to a layer built by uh, log, log sigmoidal, um, sigmoidal functions and then use a softmax uh, classifier to develop the multi-class multi -class, uh, logistic regression uh, decisions uh, or, or multi-class decisions based on uh, <clears throat> logistic regression. Then we we need to know the the difference between uh, uh, correlation and regression. Uh, correlation is a statistical measure that determines the co correlationship between two uh, two <coughs> variables. But we find that that regression describes how an independent variable is numerically related to a dependent uh, dependent variable then we find that correlation is best to represent a uh, linear relationship between two two uh, variables we find that regression is best to fit uh, to fit a baseline and then estimate one one variable on the basis of a remaining one so we can find here that in case of correlation, there shall be no, no, no definite discrimination plane that shall be separating out the uh, the variables or the or the sample. So they they can be grouped around a 45 degree uh, <clears throat> plane. But uh, but but then the case of <clears throat> regression, we can use the dependence between the the variables to develop a a grouping or discrimination of the samples around a discrimination uh, plane or around a classification plane or around a discrimination boundary so we find that the two two slides are two two plots clearly showing the the relationship between correlation and regression then we can find out the <laughs> difference between classification and regression we can put it like this that classification means to group uh, to group the output uh, into a class but regression means to uh, to predict the output value uh, by the use of the training data then uh, uh, we find that when we find that uh, classification is to predict uh, like uh, to predict the uh, the type of tumor uh, if it is malignant or benign but regression is uh, like to predict the house price uh, from the previous data so uh, we can find that classification can be if it is a discrete or a uh, categorical variable then that 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 will be a classification problem but in case of uh, regression if it is a real number or a or a continuous variable then that can be a regression problem then we can also show the um, show the difference of of regression and classification from this slide. Uh, so we can uh, uh, see a regression case like uh, while we know the know the temperature of today, we know today's temperature with the with the with the knowledge of today's temperature or a few uh, previous days temperature we can. We can predict tomorrow's temperature, but classification can be like if it will be hot or cold tomorrow. So this is the the difference between regression and classification. Then there is a there is a difference between between clustering and classification. So clustering can be uh, can be grouping of uh, grouping of content by following some similarity. So you can do uh, see a clustering uh, like like that shown in this in this grouping where the green group and the, and the, and the blue groups are separated out. Uh, then uh, just 
just previous to the, to the clustering uh, process, we can find a fitting process, a curve, curve fitting or a line, line fitting uh, process through which we can link the sample points to the, to the discrimination boundary. Then uh, we can uh, do, a, do a classification or can see classification to be, to be clearly laying a decision boundary or a discrimination boundary around which the green and the blue dots are clearly uh, 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 demarcated and placed. So we can find here uh, that, uh, that, the, that the classification will have a clear demarcation boundary around which uh, the, the classes will be, will be grouped. While in the case of clustering, there shall be some similarity factor around that or by the use of which a group of or a class shall be formed. And that, particular, that particular cluster or that, that particular set of of content formed by following some similarity will be will be uh, will be critical to uh, to generate a grouping or a or a cluster. And then uh, we can uh, just just find out the the difference between uh, between classification and clustering. We can see that the classification is a supervised process, while while the clustering is an un unsupervised uh, <clears throat> process. We can also find that the, that the classification has a finite set of classes. Clustering too can also have a finite set of, set of clusters. Then classification has a goal of uh, uh, <clears throat> reassigning new input to a class. And then, and then clustering has a goal of finding similarities within a given data set. Then in case of classification, we can use an infinite set of data, but in case of clustering, we should use a finite set of data. Now from that, we come to the K, K nearest neighbor, uh, neighbor classifier, a very, a very rudimentary type of classifier, yet this, this classifier plays a significant role in doing, uh, doing benchmarking. So the so the K, K nearest neighbor classifier is called a lazy lazy classifier because of the fact that when uh, when you uh, present it a set of set of training data it simply stores that that particular data. So if a new set of data comes, then uh, there will be a comparison with, uh, between the between the previously saved saved data and by the use of a distance measure. That, that particular factor is used to derive some, some decision regarding a classification. Further, all, all unknown samples that are, uh, that are used subsequently are categorized depending upon the database record status. The, uh, the classification is done by the use of closest points around which uh, uh, that are considered to form a, uh, form a Neighborhood, the K, K nearest classifier uses K closest points for performing classification. The K closest points are considered to form a, uh, a mm -hmm. neighborhood. So from that only the term uh, K nearest neighbor classifier comes. Uh, so it forms, it will use a distance measure. Uh, it will first uh, bring in the training set of data, store them, then use a distance measure to, to develop a, uh, to have a similarity match and depending upon the similarity match, a neighborhood shall be, shall be created and that, that, particular, that particular neighborhood shall be the basis of classification that this, this classifier is supposed to do. So we can uh, think uh, think something about a one one nearest neighbor. So if there is one one nearest neighbor, so how would the situation be like? So from that that particular standpoint, we can say that the k k nearest neighbor classifier is one of the simplest of all machine learning classifiers. A simple simple concept is label a new point, the same as the closest known point. So if you have a a point. To that point, a new point comes. 
So you need to find out the similarity between the previous point and that point. And if a third point comes, you you shall find out one more time the, the difference between the first point and the second point and the first point and the third point. The, the point that one is that one is closest will lead to the formation of a of a neighbor. So that way, uh, that that way, the closest point is uh, is uh, chosen, and it will be the basis of, of formation of a of a neighborhood. So here we can see it. Now, uh, now with the help of the help of distance metrics, since the since the uh, neighborhood builds, therefore we can use a few a few types of distance distance metrics uh, or distance uh, distance matrices to build out uh, to build up the the neighborhood. So one one of the factors uh, can be a distance measure between two points, uh, like say a one minus b one. Uh, the whole thing square plus a2 minus b2 whole thing square and there there can be one more one more variation in that distance <laughs> measure by the use of this distance uh, formula uh, distance uh, between a and b where we find a difference between a1 and b1 uh, square it plus 3a minus 3b 3a2 minus 3b2 uh, whole thing square then normally for such such cases we can use the standard uh, uh, standard Euclidean uh, distance metric uh, for for a two dimensional case we can use a um, formula square root of a1 minus b1 square plus a2 minus b2 square then for a multivariate case you can uh, find the same thing square root but then again there will be a summation for all the sample sample cases so how to build up now the k, k nearest uh, nearest neighbor uh, so it will uh, try to generalize a one one neighborhood one one nearest neighbor uh, form to smooth uh, smooth off the noise in the in the levels a new point is now uh, given uh, the most frequent level of its k nearest neighbor so we can see here uh, that uh, here, this is uh, level it, level it red. And then k is three. So here, uh, here, here the point k or the number of number of neighbors shall be shall be three, one two three, one two three, one two three. So then uh, level it blue when k is seven. So you have one two three four uh, four five six seven. So you have a seven a, uh, seven number nearest neighbor situation building up. So how to select the number of number of neighbors? So you can make the number of k's go up. Uh, so if that that makes the k k nearest neighbor classify less sensitive to noise, decrease k, it will it will permit you to capture finer structure of space. But when you pick k not too large, uh, but not too small, it depends on the data. So you will need to have a fine tuning between uh, what what type of k you want, larger or small. Uh, that should be fine tuned. Then there is uh, the the cars of dimensionality. You can find out the reliability. Uh, <laughs> prediction reliability can quickly degrade when number of factors grow, like the irrelevant uh, features of factors can swim the content from the relevant content. When many irrelevant content present, the similarity distance measure becomes less reliable. So uh, how to how to deal with it? And, uh, the remedy can be to, uh, to try and remove the irrelevant content in the pre Pre-processing step, and then weigh content uh, differently or scale the weight differently, and to make the k rise, but not to not not too much. So let's go through the plus points and the minus points of the k k nearest neighbor, need distance similarity measure, and attributes that match target function. For large training sets, uh, you must. Uh, 
make a pass through the entire data set for each classification, this, this can be uh, computationally prohibitive for large data sets. Then you can find that the, that the <coughs> prediction accuracy can quickly degrade when there are when number of attributes grow. So, but the strong point is that it's quite simple to implement, uh, requires less, less tuning, and it can perform quite well for most of the situations. So here we summarize uh, last time, uh, since we had covered learning vector quantization, we can say that learning vector quantization is based on the un unsupervised front end and supervised back end to, uh, to derive effective classification performance, support vector <laughs> machines are a class of machine learning tools, uh, class of machine learning tools that uh, uh, and tools that demonstrate less less computational requirement for uh, for classification uh, problems. Regression is a set of statistical methods used for estimation of relationship between dependent variables and one or more independent variables. Then k, k nearest neighbors uh, neighbor classifier are simple memory based classifiers used as benchmark methods for a range of classification problems. So if you have some questions, I can uh, be pleased to reply them. Uh, no, we, we, we can go to the next uh, presentation. So let's come to the next next presentation. The next uh, presentation uh, shall be next next presentations shall be um, fuzzy based system design for pattern recognition. Uh, this one is a two uh, two part uh, presentation today. I shall be shall be covering the first part in the next class. I shall be covering the second part, uh, linked to this fuzzy based system design. And on the last day, on, on, on the last day next next Tuesday, I shall be shall be covering the deep deep learning part. <clears throat> so uh, so let us start this fuzzy based system design for pattern recognition. So, so here in this two part, uh, two part presentation, I shall be, uh, shall be covering primarily the fuzzy systems basic, basic consideration, fuzzification, de defuzzification, decision making, neuro, neuro fuzzy systems, fuzzy neural systems and hybrid systems. So let's talk about the fuzzy systems first. Now, now, fuzzy system is based on fuzzy logic that was first uh, proposed in 1965 by <coughs> Lutfi Jade. So, uh, so we can say that fuzzy logic is a multi multi value logic that uh, that permits uh, intermediate values to be to be defined between conventional evaluations like true false yes no high low. Fuzzy logic starts with and builds on a set of user simplified human language rules. Fuzzy system convert less rules to their uh, to their mathematical equivalence. This simplifies the job of the system designer and uh, and the computer, and and results in much more accurate representations of the way the system behaves in the real real world. <clears throat> Fuzzy logic uh, provides a simple way to derive a definite conclusion based on vague, ambiguous, imprecise, noisy, and, and, and missing uh, input or, or content 
capture. So let's see what what the how the fuzzy logic can be can be <coughs> defined. We can we can consider the fuzzy fuzzy logic to be a superset of the of the conventional Boolean <coughs> logic uh, that that can be extended to deal with the the concept of partial truth. So truth, truth and values between completely true and completely false. So here the primary difference comes from the fact that uh, that there is a use of a statistical membership function to uh, to define states as part of states uh, as part of the limits uh, defined by the conventional boolean logic. So here you have a non non uh, non fuzzy conventional boolean logic. So there you have just two states, one is high and one is low. So between one and zero, there are no, no states between them. But in case of a fuzzy system, you have all the, all the probable states, or you have a few more number of states, probable states defined between the limits high and low. So you can see that there is a gradual variation of a line of a curve. So that particular curve here shows uh, the, the the variation of height here in the first case we just have two states of height one is short and one is tall but here in this case we have a continuous range of variations of heights between short and high so how does uh, how does fuzzy logic work fuzzy logic you can you can uh, 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 consider the fuzzy logic to be a superset of the conventional conventional logic, but use there a, a statistical membership function that will, that will permit a gradual uh, gradation of variation of values between the, between the limits. So from that, that, particular, that particular consideration, when you uh, take count or take measure of heights, you can have uh, a few samples like Billy Yoke. Uh, so the height, height variations like this, three, three feet, two inch, five feet, five inch, five feet, nine inch, five feet, 10 inch, six feet, one, seven feet, two. So the, there can be a degree of tallness between them. So zero will be the, 0, 0.00 will be the, will be the, will be the lowest one and 1.00 will be the, will be the topmost limit. So, so between them, that can be 0 0.21, 0 0.38, 0 0.42, 0 0.54. So from this, this definition, we can say the degree of truth of the statement is Drew is tall, and that particular value is 0.38. Now from there comes the definition of, of fuzzy sets. Here we can define a fuzzy set A uh, to, be a, to be a combination of X and mu A of X such that x small x belongs to capital X, where mu a of x is called a membership function for the, for the fuzzy set A. x here is referred to, a, uh, to uh, as, the, as the universe of this course. So the, so, the, um, so the membership function here will relate each member or uh, each uh, term of small x belonging to, uh, to capital X with a value in the interval 0 to 1. So here you have the fuzzy set A uh, formed by the small x, x and mu A of x. Uh, this will be the this will be the membership function such that this x belongs to this this capital X. But if you if you consider the, the crisp set, the crisp set will have a uh, have a gate function like this, a gate or a step function like this, where there can be just only two states, one and zero, yes or no. <clears throat> so for for uh, uh, for the for the case of height, we can say that if you use the use a crisp set, uh, you can just have two uh, two two states, uh, one, zero and one. Zero can be low, one can be high, and for Tallman, you can have a gradual gradual variation. Or for for height with the use of the use of the fuzzy sets, a tall man can be uh, a a limit, and a short man can be one more and the lower lower limit. 
So between them, there will be a gradual variation as depicted by the, by the statistical uh, membership function. So we need, uh, we need fuzzy logic uh, 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 since it's based on intuition and judgment. Uh, no need of a, of a mathematical model. It will, it will uh, <coughs> uh, provide a smooth transition between the members and the non-members. Non it's simple, fast, and adaptive. It's less sensitive to system fluctuations and can implement the design objectives and difficult that are uh, difficult to uh, represent uh, uh, through maths in uh, both in case of linguist by the use of linguistic or descriptive rules so that is the is the reason why we need need fuzzy logic so let's talk about the about the membership functions so we need uh, certain uh, certain statistical functions called the uh, all the membership functions through which the the fuzzy sets are developed so since we have seen that uh, with the case of the height height part so we can use uh, some uh, statistical representations to uh, to denote the the gradual variation of heights so here we can uh, see that uh, for some some situations uh, uh, of height uh, in cm between 30 and uh, say some some factor of 100 we can call that to be short so that can be represented by a function then uh, from 60 to to about 180 we can call or represent that to be a medium one so uh, there is a gradual distribution and then beyond uh, some 170 all the rest uh, up to 250 50 cm we can call that to be tall so the these uh, three three uh, distributions have a statistical uh, function representing the values very uh, very clearly so we can use uh, for for fuzzy sets there are standard uh, standard membership functions those are single valued or single tone triangular trapezoidal or sigmoidal functions as shown here in this slide so we can have a triangular membership function specified by three three parameters a b c and denoted by this this particular function similarly we can have a trapezoid uh, membership function specified by x a b c d and denoted by a function that is something like this uh, uh, that will take a value of zero if x is less than a uh, if x is between a and b you can have a trapezoidal function defined by x minus a by b minus a and one if x belong if x is confined between b and c it will have a value of b, b minus x by b minus c if uh, x is between uh, c and d and zero if x is less than d so the sigmoidal membership function is represented by two uh, two parameters a a c so sigmoid of a factor x of a variable x with two two parameters a c is re represented by this term one by one plus exponential of of minus a multiplied by x minus v where, where a controls the slope at the crossover point x uh, uh, equal to c. These, these membership functions are some of the commonly used membership functions in fuzzy inference systems, uh, FIS. So we can use here the term FIS. So, so uh, here, is a, here is a depiction of the crisp membership functions. There will be just two, two limits, 0 and 1. And here is a very common, uh, common fuzzy, fuzzy membership function that is the that is the Gaussian membership function used for most of the real world situations or real world representations. So if we use a number of number of membership functions for representing different height states, so you can have uh, the 
You can have the membership functions for very short, short, medium, tall, and very tall. So mu vs, mu s, mu m, mu t, and mu vt. So these will uh, represent a, a combined membership functions for all height situations. So you can have here these uh, these representations graded with some value uh, taken, uh, like 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, or mu uh, taking value 0, 0, 0, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0. Then you can have some, 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 of the, some of the features of the membership functions given as core, new A of X taking value one. So this will be the core part. This will be the support part, uh, mu A of X taking value greater than zero and boundary when mu of A is confined between zero and one. So this will be the boundary. So these are the, these are the features of the membership functions. Then there is one more term called uh, called a linguistic variable or linguistic term. Linguistic variable is a variable whose values are sentences in a natural or artificial language. So if you want to uh, represent like uh, in cases tall, uh, tall, very tall, very very tall, somewhat tall, not not very tall, tall but not not very tall, quite tall, more or less tall. Here we can say that tall is a linguistic value or a primary term. So hedges are very more or less or so on. So these terms can be used for, uh, for representation uh, by the use of the fuzzy system. So here is a, a, a case of the use of the linguistic uh, variable. So you can see that X uh, shall be a linguistic variable for the level speed. Terms x, which are fuzzy sets, uh, could be could be positive low, negative high. So t is positive high, positive low, negative low, negative high, zero. So each term in a, is a fuzzy variable de uh, <coughs> defined on the base variable, uh, which might be the scale of the relevant velocities. So uh, you can have here very high, negative high, negative low. Uh, this is normal. Uh, here it is positive low and positive high. So these are some of the some, some of the linguistic variable representations showing variations of speed between minima between minus side of maximum speed and plus side of the maximum speed. Now, if we want to use the uh, the linguistic uh, hedges to <coughs> represent situations like very 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 plus slightly minus so some of the standard definitions given are uh, mu mu y by y square integration of y then very very you have a alpha term that takes a value of four then for plus alpha will take a power of 1.25 and slightly you will have the alpha term taking a square root and for the minus you will have the power raised to 0 0.75 so how will these uh, look like in the in the geometrical case so a a little mu a of x will take a power of 1.3 and, and the graphical representation will look like slightly mu a of x 1.7 very mu a of x squared that will be something like this extremely or very, very mu A of X raised to the power uh, three. So, so these are some of, the, some of the representations of how we can use the linguistic variables. So let's now find out the difference between uh, <coughs> probability and fuzzy, uh, fuzzy logic. Probability, uh, we can say that that will be a probability measure, but fuzzy logic is defined by membership function. Probability before, something takes place fuzzy logic uh, uh, it will be it will be a post uh, uh, something has taken place uh, then <clears throat> probability is a measure theory fuzzy logic is a set theory uh, and then and then <clears throat> probability is uh, its domain is boolean mathematics and fuzzy logic is uh, is not not confined to boolean boolean uh, logic 
Boolean, but it is a combination of Boolean logic and statistical theory. So how we how will we uh, define or how will we design fuzzy systems? We can design fuzzy system in this way. There can be three uh, steps. First one, a fuzzification. Then we will have a fuzzy uh, decision making or inference generation. Then we have the de de defuzzification from where we will get the results. So there are there are a few ste few steps fuzzy fire that that shall be taking the crisp uh, samples and will be will be converting to fuzzy form. Then there will be a fuzzy rule base. Uh, the, this uh, this fuzzy rule base is a combination of some if then uh, loops or if then statements. Then we have a fuzzy inference system. Uh, that will take the take the support of the fuzzy rule base to derive some decision to generate some decisions and then there will be a d d fuzzy fire because the fuzzy inference system shall be generating a fuzzified uh, decision that uh, should be converted to a real world uh, a format or to a crisp a set format so for that, we need a D uh, fuzzy fire. So, uh, so fuzzification will be a, uh, a process to convert a crisp sample into a fuzzy uh, variable. For that, we use membership functions like Gaussian trapezoidal and, uh, <clears throat> and triangular. The membership function is so, so defined that it reflects the designer's know-how. It should provide a smooth transition between the member and the non-members of the, of, the, of the fuzzy set, and it must be simple to calculate. So here you get the, the crisp uh, signal coming through it, and it will, be, it will be converted to a fuzzy form. So for this case, first, first input, second input. <clears throat> now we come to the de defuzzification process. Now de defuzzification will be just a just a reverse process. Uh, uh, it will be a mapping process from the from the fuzzy space to the crisp uh, space to the crisp world. So you need to you need to convert a fuzzy variable to a crisp variable uh, uh, or uh, into a, a unique real world number. So the defuzzification process has the capability to reduce a fuzzy set uh, into a crisp single valued quantity or into a crisp set to convert a fuzzy matrix uh, into a crisp matrix or to convert a fuzzy number uh, uh, into a crisp number. There are some, uh, some methods uh, for the defuzzification, maximum membership principle, central method, weighted, uh, weighted Average method, then um, uh, mean max uh, membership, uh, centers of sum, center of largest uh, surface area, center of maximum, last of maximum. So uh, maximum membership method. So you will have uh, a number of a number of maximum memberships. Uh, you have a number of membership uh, function defined. The function with the maximum value will be selected for doing. Uh, the uh, de defasification process. But uh, this is not a reliable one. Uh, therefore, the centroid method is selected uh, for doing the de defasification process. Uh, this, this method is known, is uh, further known as a, as a center of mass or center of surface area or center of the gravity method. Uh, uh, this is the most commonly used de defasification method. De uh, defuzzified uh, uh, result x star is given as um, the integration of mu c of x multiplied by x dx by the integration of mu uh, mu c of x dx. Uh, so here yeah, you find that this is the centroid method of the defuzzification. This is the most reliable one. 
Then there is one more one that is the weighted edge. Average method, where you find a <coughs> ratio between mu f and fn by a summation of mu f for all i, for all the samples. So you get here mu e multiplied by e plus mu vg plus vg. So uh, this, this mu e will be a range of membership function. This e will be a, uh, a mean of the sample count e. Then the mu vg will be the will be the membership function of the VG range. VG will be the will be the value or the sample mean of that particular range by and mu e plus VG. So here is one such one such case. So if you want to use this method, uh, you can mm, uh, do it for a number of students' uh, uh, case to find out if the student is fair or not. So this particular method can be used, and then a decision for a fair student can be can be done and can be derived then there is one more one more method called the mean max membership uh, method the mean of maximum defazification de yields the mean value of all local control actions whose membership functions reach the maximum the, the crisp value z is given by z shall be uh, a summation of alpha k HKWK by summation of alpha K HK with WK being the crisp support value at which the membership function reaches maximum HK and most uh, most normally one for normalized membership functions. So X here shall be A plus B by two. So, uh, so mean max membership method will use uh, this sort of a diagram uh, from which the value of x shall be found by taking the values of a and b and then uh, then dividing it by two. Then there is one more one more method called the centers of sum. This method will use the exactly sums of the individual fuzzy uh, subsets uh, and not use their unions. Uh, the, the calculations here are fast, but the main drawback shall be that the intersecting uh, surface areas are summed up two times. The de de defuzzified value x star is given as the integration of summation mu uh, cj of x dx by uh, integration summation i is equal to 1 to n mu cj of x. Then there is uh, a method where we need to find the center of the largest uh, surface area. Same thing, uh, this, this method can be adopted when the output consists of at least two convex fuzzy subsets, which are not uh, doing a, a, a <coughs> Uh, crossover. This uh, the the result that you get from this method is biased towards the side of one membership function. So this is the this is the formula. It's nearly same uh, like the like the previous one, but here we do not use the uh, summation of the samples. Then there is one more method called the uh, first of maxima. Uh, the steps are a maximum height of the Union is found, uh, then the first of the maxima is found, then after this, the last maxima is found. So that way, the last of the maxima shall give the de de defuzzified value. So, uh, so here, the fuzzy rule, fuzzy rule formation shall be a combination of certain if else statements, and that way it will form the fuzzy rule base. So the so the fuzzy rule rule base uh, will have three general forms. They are the uh, they are the assignment statements, the conditional statements, and the un unconditional statements. So here are some some uh, cases of the assignment statements, unconditional statements, and conditional statements. So if y is equal to small co orange color, uh, or color shall be equal to is equal 
orange, then A shall be equal to S. Paul is not, not tall and not, not very short. So how to do that? So here is some of the case. Then un unconditional statements go to sum. Stop, divide by A, turn the, turn the pressure low. Then conditional statements like, uh, 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 like say, if Y is very cold, then stop. Uh, if A is high, then B is low, or else B is not low. Like this, the rule, rule base is formed. The fuzzy rule base, uh, we can see uh, one case that rule one, if height is short, then uh, weight is light. Rule two, if height is medium, then weight is medium. Rule three, if height is tall, then weight is heavy. So fuzzy, uh, fuzzy reasoning can be based on four different uh, four different ways. One is called the categorical reasoning. The second one is called the qualitative reasoning. Next is called the uh, syllogistic uh, silo reasoning. And the fourth one is called the dispositional reasoning. So how is fuzzy uh, decision uh, derived? So the fuzzy decision is derived. Uh, based on the use of fuzzy membership functions and uh, finding a, uh, a closest match between the values of the fuzzy, uh, fuzzy membership functions. <clears throat> so uh, as shown in this, this particular slide, uh, each of the fuzzy membership functions will have the, have the values derived like P, F, G, V, G. So they can have values of, zero, uh, of 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0. So now from that, we can, we can determine a closest match. And that particular closest match will lead to a fuzzy decision making. So fuzzy, fuzzy classification is based on fuzzy classifiers that are built up by the use of the fuzzy theory. Here, uh, we need that expert knowledge. Uh, <clears throat> so that we can use the linguistic variables. So here are two such two such cases. So uh, we can use uh, situations like very low, low, medium, and high. And we can use these variables for modeling uh, different height cases. So with that, uh, with that uh, representation, with or with that type of this uh, 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 representation. Uh, we can have uh, a, sa a sample can have membership functions, memberships in many different classes to different degrees. Typically, the membership values are considered so that all of the membership values for a particular sample sum to one. So this is one of the one of the requirement. Now the expert knowledge for this this variable can be can be formulated to be a rule like if entropy is high, n alpha is high then plus shall be four so this this sort of a rule or this type of a rule uh, can be can be created and for all all possible cases all sets of rules uh, can be can be placed in a in a in a table and for deriving a decision there can be a continuous search between the most most probable decision for a particular uh, a state or a particular class, and then the, the uh, classification decision can be can be derived. So we can use uh, some 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 of the some of the combinations like this to form a fuzzy rule base. So if we are dealing with the entropy and alpha, uh, and we have the class class knowledge, we can see that very low and low can form class one. Low and medium can form class two. Medium and high can form class three, and high and high can form class four. So that means if we are doing this, shall be the fuzzy rule base. So if we are now doing a classification, we need to bring in a sample, pass it through the through the classification process, and do now a, a, a comparison and find out the best matching class, uh, the the class to which it has the best match uh, will lead to the classification decision. So uh, now, to, now to generate a crisp decision from the fuzzy value, we have to de-fuzzify the 
and the fuzzy sets. Therefore, we have to choose one representative value. Uh, so we have talked about the defuzzification de de process, but the most, most common one is to use the center of gravity. Uh, and through that, we can generate a defuzzification de process. And that way, we can uh, give the result to the real world or to the crisp world. So what we can say is that the fuzzy logic provides a different way to, uh, to control uh, or a classification problem. This, this method focuses on what the system should do rather than trying to model how it works. The fuzzy method uh, requires sufficient expert knowledge for the for formulation of the rule base, the combination of the sets, and the defuzzification. Fuzzy logic is uh, helpful uh, for very complex processes where there is no simple mathematical model known beforehand. So these are some of the some, some of the common points that have driven the growth of fuzzy systems. So pros and cons, uh, fuzzy systems are found to be very uh, uh, suitable for complex and highly nonlinear processes. You can use fuzzy concepts like medium, low, vary, and all that. Uh, it uh, fuzzy system is very successfully used for control system problems. Uh, it will have uh, help to get rid of discontinuities in the in the behavior. The drawbacks or the uh, 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 disadvantages are sometimes the um, the results are very un unpredictable or unexpected and hard to debug. Uh, it might be computationally a bit uh, complicated. Now let's come to the FIS or fuzzy. Uh, inference system. So fuzzy rule based system, fuzzy models, fuzzy expert systems are together known as FIS, fuzzy, fuzzy inference systems. The key uh, cell of a fuzzy logic system is the FIS. So here it's, it's primary, uh, primary uh, consideration shall be to derive a uh, uh, decision. So it will use a set of if-then rules uh, with, with connectors like OR and N for making uh, necessary decisions. So here we'll have the, the crisp, set, crisp set converted to a fuzzy form. And then that will go through a fuzzy rule base or use a fuzzy rule base. And then the, the fuzzy decision shall be made. And then the, then the decision shall be, shall be de defuzzified and uh, shall be transmitted back to the, to the crisp world. So here is the complete complete system. So here you have the crisp set value coming in. You have a fuzzification block. There will be a rule rule base. So the rule base or the or the knowledge base shall be a combination of the database and the rule base. So it will be driving the decision making block here. So the so the fuzzification block will be will be giving the fuzzy form or fuzzy format of the of the of the values that will come to the decision making block and that particular decision generated by the fis shall be in the in the fuzzified form in the in the fuzzy form and then a defuzzification process will be uh, will be converting it back to the crisp form so the real world can find or derive meaning from it. You can have two FISs. One is called the Mamdani. Uh, that is one of the very popular uh, fuzzy uh, uh, fuzzy uh, decision-making systems or inference systems. And the second one is Sugeno. FIS. So the so the uh, so the Mamdami one will have 
the fuzzy variables uh, or the fuzzified variables that will uh, require the membership values, then uh, the rule base is formed on membership values or a composite antecedents. Uh, then the composite rule outputs uh, will collect all the all the membership values for the output form from all the rule base, and then finally use the center of gravity to de defuzzify and then ge generate the crisp form of the result. And in the case of the Sugeno type, there are two steps mainly, fuzzifying uh, the crisp samples, then you will use the fuzzy operator, uh, same like the Mamdami, uh, here is that in the Sugeno type, the membership functions are either linear or constant. There is the, that is that that is the difference. So it is somewhat simplified yet covering the complete range of values. So here is the Sugeno uh, Sugeno FIS. Two uh, two values are being fed. It goes through the through the membership function. Membership function. There will be n rule. They they will be they will be combining, and there, that will be rule strength w. So this will now go through the go through a decision making process. Uh, a membership function here will be generating the decision, and then z will come out, and this will be the the decision uh, uh, derived. But that that will be uh, done in the synchronization with the rule strength w. So, in case of a fuzzy expert system, there are three main blocks knowledge base, then the uh, inference block, and then uh, a, uh, a layer that, that will be doing the fuzzification and the defuzzification de between the user and the system. So, here is the case. So, here is the knowledge base, here is the uh, inference block. And here is the two-way conversion user interface through which you can and you can communicate. <coughs> and now the fuzzy decision-making process can be as follows: it will be a, an individual decision-making, multi-person decision-making, multi-objective decision-making, multi. attribute decision making and fuzzy bayesian decision making so these are uh, the five different types of decision making so uh, here in the case of the first type that is a individual decision making uh, the situation is characterized by the by the following uh, set of possible uh, actions, processes, set of goals, GI, and set of uh, set of <coughs> constraints. Then finally, we need to derive a fuzzy decision that will be that will be given as the FD uh, that will take the take the minimum of the INF of GI of A and the INF. Of CJ of A, where GI and CJ are the are the compositions of uh, of all GIAs, that is the goals, and CJ will be the will be the composition of all the all the constraints. Similar is the case with the multi multi person decision making, where there can be in multi person decision making, the decision makers have. Uh, uh, a, uh, a link uh, to different content uh, based upon which uh, the decision is based. So here, each member of the group N in individual decision makers has a has a preference. So so depending upon the, the preference, we can say a multi uh, multi person decision is given by S C X I X J to be equal to 1 when xi is greater than k and xj for some k and 0 
uh, for the rest of the cases. And multi-objective decision making in making a decision when there are several objectives to be realized and the decision making is called multi-objective decision making. Many, uh, many decision process may be based on single objectives such as cost, uh, minimization, time consumption, profit maximization, and so on. The main cases in the multi-objective decision making are to acquire proper content, proper know-how related to the satisfaction, um, satisfaction of the objectives by various alternatives to weigh and uh, the relative importance of each of the objectives. Then multi attribute decision making. Uh, here you can find out uh, the, yeah, the evaluation of the alternatives can be can be carried out based on several attributes of the object called multi attribute decision making. The attributes may be classified as numerical data, linguistic data, and qualitative data. So there is a case of multi attribute decision making. Here is an alternative number, an alternative, uh, uh, an alternative evaluation and the e, uh, evaluation of the alternative attributes. So J and Y will take values of one, two, and so on and so forth. Y1, Y2, YJ, and YN. So they, they, will be, they will be combined with X11, XI1, and XRL, the next one, two, XI2, and XR2, like this. So that way uh, we will uh, link with multi-attribute decision making. Then finally comes the fuzzy Bayesian decision making that is based on the on the probability theory. Uh, here, uh, the here the core is the uh, is the Bayesian uh, Bayesian decision making, but uh, the use of fuzzified forms are uh, are required. So so uh, so conditional probability cases are here calculated, and that way the decisions are derived. Now, where we use the fuzzy systems, we use the fuzzy systems in pattern recognition and classification, fuzzy clustering, image and speech <coughs> processing, fuzzy systems for prediction, fuzzy control, monitoring and diagnostics, optimization and decision making, and group decision making. So we can uh, we can here summarize. Uh, here we can use a range of approaches to uh, conventional uh, crisp set based uh, representation for deriving uh, fuzzy sets. We have found that the, that the fuzzy sets are uh, suitable for dealing with uh, uncertainty. Then uh, though there are some, some computational complexity, but yet with that we can make, uh, make unreliability, uh, reliability better. Then, uh, since, the, since the reliability part is better, uh, we can fine tune the, the uh, response of the system or the, or the network. Here are some of, the, some of the references you can go through. Very good references. I'd like to request you to raise a few questions. It would be great to give you reply.
so uh, with this we uh, we come to an end next next class on thursday we shall be uh, we, we shall be covering the second part of this fuzzy system based pattern recognition system design and in the last class next next tuesday we will be will be uh, covering deep deep learning so that will bring to the end to this uh, lecture series so so there we there we come to an end uh, and thank you to you all